Tony Seminaro, my legend. <laughs> Who's this here again? God bless you. God bless you. Okay. Mr. Rotel's here, all right. Ladies and gentlemen, would everyone please stand for the pledge? At this time, I'd like to introduce Mr. James Rotel. Retired Army veteran who served under the rank of E-4 as Morris Code Interceptor, a tour in Vietnam, as well as being stationed statewide. Mr. Rotel, would you like to step up to the podium? Thank you for your service. The, the floor is yours. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, Liberty and justice for all. <laughs> now this is a little different today. The Mr. Rotel who did the pledge today is actually going to be here for the business spotlight in a few minutes. So Mr. Rotel, if you'd like to have a seat, we're gonna to get to the business spotlight in probably about 10, 15 minutes. I'd like to bring this Wednesday, October 18th, 2017 Board of Commissioners meeting to order at 10, 8, 10 after 10 a.m. in the Commissioner's Conference Room. Can I have a motion for the reading of the minutes? I'll make a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Uh, roll call. Commissioner Terriani? Yes. Commissioner Cummings? Yes. Commissioner O'Malley? Yes. We're going to go to proclamation presentation. This time we're going to go to 17-0265. This proclamation presentation is declared on for October 18, 2017 to, to Tony Seminaro, Lackawanna County resident, for participating in his 22nd Steamtown Marathon. Mr. Seminaro, would you like to come up to the podium? Trace. No, the podium. Sorry, there. Ladies and gentlemen, before Tony starts to speak, Tony is a legend in the running world, literally in the running world. He is the top age group runner, over 80 over plus. He's, in, he's done it in his 70s and I think even into in his 60s. He's run numerous Boston marathons and um, he is just someone for everyone to look up to. Older doesn't mean old, older means faster and stronger and Tony, absolutely stands for this reasoning and rational thinking and um, 80 isn't old in Tony's book 80 is young and spree and he just completed his 22nd Steamtown Marathon Tony talk to us about your career and I'm not the race. At this that's all right you can talk a little but bit I have to thank you for <laughs> for this and uh, what you're doing for me and I'm uh, I'm proud to have uh, run all 22 with you and you're, in, <laughs> and you're included in i don't know how many is left seven or eight of us I there's don't know. there's eight now including eight me yep now. eight yeah. we, we dropped so one I, last year yeah so i thank everybody i just try to do my best and i'm just going to keep doing as long as i can move okay. and he can still move let me tell you uh commissioner cummings well i'm not a runner so but i appreciate your service thank you so much and okay. uh thank you for uh running with with uh commissioner o'malley well, I'm sure you beat, right? Yes, he did. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, like ours, just so you know. <laughs> How about that, huh? <laughs> it's nice difference. Commissioner Terry, Eddie? What was your time, Tony? 422. That's pretty what good. What was your time? Yeah. 630. Was it good? Oh, I'll take that. I'll take it. 630. Yeah, 630 for not, not, not bad for in the high but, twos. But it, that's good considering the weather. <laughs> oh, 96% humidity, 83 the worst degrees. The worst one I've ran. It was the only one I've ever dumped water on my head every aid station. It was well, everyone. Scary. I did it too. Yeah. yeah you had to, or you. Uh, or you were to dehydrate and you're just were just overheating. People dropped out. It was the first time, and I think they said more people dropped out in this last marathon than they did in the last five years together. Yeah. So yeah, that it was a. Yeah, there was a lot. It was a heck of a day. <laughs> it really was. 
Okay, we have a proclamation here. Whereas in 1995, a committee was formed with the vision of a marathon course which would run through the cities and boroughs of Lackawanna County. Local sponsors, local, local sponsors and great partnerships were formed in the fall of 1996 where 500 runners participated in the Steamtown Marathon. Today we recognize and celebrate the 22nd anniversary of the annual Steamtown Marathon and the participants who have run in all 22 races. Whereas through hard work and perseverance, the growth of the race has continued with 800 runners registered in the second year the Steamtown Marathon continues to expand and boasts approximately 2,000, I think it's even hit as high as 2,500 runners, from 49 states, five countries. The Steamtown has constantly been ranked one of the nation's fastest courses and has averaged 22 to 25 percent finishers qualifying for Boston Marathon, which is a huge thing to be able to go to Boston. Whereas the community fueled with impressive staff and thousands of volunteers, and no one's paid. Most marathons, when they get this point, they're absolutely paying people. Everybody's a volunteer. The course runs through 14 northeastern Pennsylvania communities, including approximately seven miles of paved rail to trails along the Lackawanna County, Lackawanna River which is really nice. The trees were beautiful. Since 1996, proceeds of more than $1.4 million benefit the residents of St. Joseph Center, whereas runners from around the world have named Steamtown the sixth best overall marathon. And today we congratulate those who have participated in all 22 marathons. Now, therefore, we, Patrick O'Malley, Jerry Notarian, and Lorene A. Cummings, commissioners of the County of Lackawanna, Pennsylvania, do hereby and acknowledge and proclaim October 8, 2017, on behalf of the 214,000 citizens as Tony Seminaro Day in Lackawanna County. Thank you, Tony. Come on up. Thank you. Come right up here, Tony. And this is the newest shirt that they gave out at the last Steam Town Marathon. That's a nice shirt. Yeah, it is. Just in the rhythm. Yeah. Congratulations, Tony. Thanks again. Lovely talking. Thank you. You're, you're, you're the best. Yeah. Thank you. See you at number 23. <laughs> there you go, Tony. It's on. I'll be here. <laughs> <laughs> and Joan was actually at the finish line when I finished, and she was there for numerous other runners, too. That's Joan Hawanis right here. She was downtown Scranton for us all of us. Did Thanks, Joan. What's that? Did she run? Did no, run? she was down there clapping for everybody oh. that came in, which really mattered at the end of that race. Okay, 17-0226, Commissioner Cummings. Uh, DC Pet Center. Mr. Rotel and your family would like to step up to the podium. So you're a small business owner in Lackawanna County. Could you tell us a little bit about your business? I can't hear very tell well. Tell you about our business. What? Tell her about our business. We're a full service pet center. We're in business how long? <laughs> You knew it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's hard of hearing. I'm sorry. That's okay. We are I'm a nurse. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We are a full line, full service pet store. We specialize in serving our community and teaching them how to care for their animals the right way. Nice. We want to educate all the young children coming into our store so they grow up to be future animal enthusiasts as we are. As you could tell, we obviously love animals. We have been in business for 24 years, Thanks. and we are solely family-owned, run, and operated. So who started the business? My father started the business as a hobby for saltwater fish. Really? He has, he's a fish enthusiast. <laughs> Can he, ex you don't want to expand on that story? What made you decide to do that? Just because you like doing, working with? I enjoyed the fish and everything. And you just decided one day to, I think I can make a business out of and this? it was jobs for my children. Yeah. <laughs> it, it is. Well, it is. And we were all younger then, yes. <laughs> Sir, your story is what inspires others. I mean, your family is obviously here taking over. And, you know, everybody, one thing I always tell people is we always hear about how we're trying to bring in new companies into our area. But we have great companies here already. Absolutely. We and you're one of them. We've been able to withstand all of the superstores coming in, and it hasn't affected our business at all. Our customers appreciate that we're family-owned and operated. We know them by name. We right. know what they need when they come in. 
Yeah, and and you know we still have that here in our county, mm -hmm. and we show that every every other week when we have people come in like yourself, who've had family-owned businesses going from generation to generation, all based on one simple idea or love of something that they they decided Absolutely. they were going to make a business out of. Yeah. So I greatly appreciate what you've done. Thank I you. greatly appreciate the family continuing that business, and I see the future generation is standing there. And, and who are you? What's your name, honey? Abby, are you going to continue the the tradition there? And <laughs> good for you. She helps now. <laughs> what's your right. What's your favorite part of the store? The dogs. The dogs. <laughs> the puppies or the Do you have pup, a lot of puppies? Yeah. Oh yeah, I bet you love taking care of them. Yeah, and that's great. That's a great story. Um, congratulations, and yeah, I'm proud to have you here. I'm proud that you came in, and it's an honor to have you here. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you all. Commissioner Terry, any? It's, uh, difficult to run a, a small business uh, when you're competing with the, the big box store. It is. There's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a challenge, but it's very re rewarding. It is very and, rewarding at the end of the and day. it's great that you have everyone still involved and wants to stay involved. Uh, your mom and dad are very lucky people to have you and yep. uh, your daughter uh, willing and helpful and wanting to continue it. And it's a good luck and I hope it prospers for another 20-some years. You know, Thank you. Thank you. Um, DC Pet Store is a great pet store. Um, my wife went to DC Pet Store. My son had a bad day. You're not supposed. To, you're not supposed to buy a pet on a bad day. My son, <laughs> my son was like nine years old, and my wife went into DC Pet Store, and I kept telling her, "Well, my son was was like two or, two or three years. What was he? He was three years old." I said, "When he gets a little older, we're going to get a German Shepherd puppy." Well, needless to say, my wife goes to DC Pet Store, which we've always been going to for frogs and you name it, uh, snakes, gerbils, fish, whatever for all of our pet needs. She comes home with a little puppy, and my son says to me, Dad, I, I didn't pick that out. And he tells me on the side, I go, what do you mean? He goes, Mom and the dog's eyes met, and, <laughs> and we got the dog. And I'm like, I said, what? and he goes, there was a German Shepherd there. And I said, I want that. And he's, my, mother, my wife said, it's too big. I said, really? Did you really do that? And she goes, no, no, he picked it out. It was truly my wife. So she stand there for this little white puppy, and I'm going, take it back uh, uh. and they looked at me and they're all like I think that they were, I was getting tossed off the island so I said okay and um, the dog brought a lot the the dog has brought a lot of love in her house the dog's name is Bailey and it taught my kids responsibility both of them and they're uh, 10 and 16 now and it really really matters and whenever you go to DC pet store you could talk to any one of the family members there they really care about the animals they really care about who you are and they care about what your needs are so that's what it's about. And you're not going to get that at a big pet store. You're just not going to have that because everybody is there on their hourly time and they're not concerned. If you're dealing with people that own it directly and are relatives of the owner, they really care. And I'd like to thank you for everything you do because they make a lot of people's dreams come through. Because you see a person be have a, re, a union with an animal, whether it's a dog, a cat, whatever it is, a snake. But it's something that someone can actually... You know, I mean, you cohabitate. They, they live in the same house with you. They're part of your life. And I'm, there's nothing like the dog that we have. And I'd like to thank you for that. Good it really plan. matters. And it's a Jack Russell Terrier, so I was like, oh, my God, it could, <laughs> it could jump three feet. It's at four feet. It's amazing. <laughs> okay, but talk to us about what's, what's the phone number. If anybody wants to come to D.C. Pet Store and what's the address? And it is 1908 Scranton Carbondale Highway in Dixon City. We're right on the corner across from Wegmans in the Circle Drive-In. Can't miss it. <laughs> Our hours of operation are 10 to 9, Monday through Saturday, Sunday 11 to 5.30. And our phone number is 570-489-2211. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, and we have a certificate for you. And um, Commissioner Cummings? Uh, today we have a certificate of recognition. The County of Lackawanna Board of Commissioners does hereby recognize D.C. Pet Center in honor of achieving the designation of a small business spotlight in Lackawanna County given this 18th day of October 2017 by Commissioner Patrick O'Malley, Commissioner Jerry Nateriani, and myself. Come on up. Thank you. And ladies and gentlemen, last but not least, to this day, we still stop the store for various things, and my younger son thinks that he should have the option of getting his own dog. So there, I know they're, they're, they're working on him, so we'll see. We let him play with them. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you.
Thanks. How are you? Thank you. Welcome. No, thank you. She's our little CEO. Let's <laughs> see what you see. will be something. She will be. Yes, she will. Really? Yeah, she That's will. awesome. He's okay, still making ahead. his deal on that puppy. Oh, I know. I still want the German Shepherd eventually. <laughs> we'll get it for you one of these days. Okay. Go ahead. start. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. you. Remember me? I do, but I With can't. Paul Benitez. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right. I'm a duo. Uh, <laughs> that's that's construction, too. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Oh. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. He's not coming back? <laughs> Thanks for the work you did on my house. Is John Serrano? <laughs> John. Hey. Thanks for the reminder. Thank you. It's nice to see you guys at work. <laughs> So if anybody's looking for a cat or a kitten or a puppy or fish or whatever, you know, please stop in to DC Pet Store. I love that story. That's a great story. Okay. You know, before before we get into the opportunity for the uh, public to speak on agenda items only, I want to hand this out because. I'm bringing something up that I think really matters, and there's not a person on this board that aren't concerned with this situation that just went on. Told you it'd be something interesting. You're right. What can I say? <laughs> yeah, I'll read this one. <clears throat> yeah. You know, um, this board of commissioners is really concerned with the uh, loss of life in our community. And I think the numbers are approximately probably up to about 235, 236 citizens that have lost their life since 2014 to 2017. And there's nobody on this board that is more concerned about this than Commissioner Cummings. You know, Lackawanna County government works very hard to combat the opioid and heroin addiction that the citizens have lost their lives to by this scourge in this community for such a long time. There's too many broken hearts. You know, we work hard every day to try to stop this from hurting any more families. You know, we have we support our drug courts, we support our veterans courts, we support Lackawanna County Drug and Alcohol, and if anybody needs help, you can always reach out to them. And um, we most recently, a year and a half ago, reached out to the, the Heenahan family, reached out to us, and we reached out to them. And the Board of Commissioners actually came up with an awareness rally in Lackawanna County with the actual center point of the whole event being Sammy Heenahan because her parents put in the paper that she died from an overdose and they didn't want that to happen to any other family ever. Mm -hmm. So we had this rally, it's been two years in a row and the Heenahan family are there and they make sure that their daughter's name will never be forgotten and they're trying to stop this will never ever happen to any other families. And it's something that we should be very thrilled that we actually have at our courthouse to take it out of the dark and stop the whispers. And last but not least, we are currently suing the pharmaceutical companies for overdosing our community. That's what's going on in our community. People are being overdosed, and it's scary. It really is. You know what I mean? After they can't get to the pills that they're on, when they're on the street, they eventually go to a situation where they may get a bag of heroin for $5, and then it just gets much, much worse than that. And um, I just never thought that we'd be in a situation where this could happen. but. A new situation has come up and it's something the Board of Commissioners I know will very much will be involved in trying to make sure that it's fixed. Um, we are putting the hands, the handcuffs have been put on the Drug Enforcement Administration and hundreds of citizens are dying 
all the time because they're not able to stop large amounts of drugs whenever they feel like it. It is time to ask the United States Congress to repeal the Ensuring Patient Access Effective Drug Enforcement Act of 2016 before it kills more citizens and destroys more family. I have a resolution which I'm going to read. I'm going to ask my fellow commissioners to vote it because um, we want to let them know that we're concerned from Lackawanna County and across our country that this shouldn't go on and this should not affect any more families. I'd like to open it to the commissioners. Commissioner Cummings, before I read the resolution. Well, um, I watched the report on 60 Minutes Sunday that we all saw, and it was amazing that not one senator or congressman, no one, voted against this, and it was signed by President Barack Obama into law. Does no one read anything out there in Washington? Do they not understand what they're signing half the time? I, that's what I have to ask. I, I, I just, every single one, just let this go through. There was not one dissenting vote on stopping pharmaceutical companies from targeting specific areas like they did in West Virginia, which I spoke about in February. I, I gave you the numbers. Was there 300 and some people and they got millions of pills sent to that one area? Yeah, they, they, but I mean, it's it an like, overabundance you'd never ever see in this world. You know, it's something I, I it, it just, it's not on party lines. It just crosses party lines. It, it, it's not a party issue. It's an actual, you know, problem we have in our country. <coughs> and people just don't understand the relevance of what's happening or they just choose to ignore it. And that was something that we wanted to curb with Stop the Whispers so that people were aware, to bring awareness on how disturbingly bad the opioid crisis is based on a manufactured crisis through pharmaceutical companies and government intervention. I mean, we just got the AMA last year to remove pain as the fifth vital sign. And my current work is in Washington is on the Veterans Administration, who, who also have it listed as the fifth vital sign. And then we see things like this come through Congress where not one person voted against it. So it's not a party issue. It's not a partisan issue. It's, it's just people are not aware of how serious it is and um, you know a simple thing like uh, you know I'm sure that what some were probably thinking is we don't want to curb business for anyone which we're all here we just saw a small business spotlight done here we don't ever want to try and get in the way of businesses but this is completely different and, and this I think should have been looked into more um, and I think that's why it wasn't because it was you know uh, Congress's way and the President Obama's way of not stepping on a business entity. Um, but when you're looking at items like uh, opioids, you have to watch. You, I mean, we have to be uh, more vigilant in what we're we're signing off on. So, um, you know, I I I was handed this by Commissioner O'Malley about what a half hour ago. So, um, I do agree that you know we should encourage our Congress, which I'm sure they're already looking at doing this um, and repealing this, but um, like I said, it was it was not a partisan issue and it was signed off by President Barack Obama, so um, it's not really a party issue and I hope that it doesn't become one and I hope it doesn't become a political uh, something political because the opi opioid crisis is much uh, too important Bigger. to make it into a political issue. And I'm starting to see it becoming a political issue, and I don't like that. Um, not with this specific incident, but, um, you know, this is serious. This is a crisis to me. I, I've seen it in families. I got involved in this because of what I've seen happening. And um, I, hope, I hope that, you know, it does not become some kind of political tool in the future. Thank you. Commissioner Terry, any? Uh, I was not given a copy of that a half hour ago. <laughs> I, 
totally unaware Sorry. of what, what it was. Uh, I can't imagine how every congressman and senator and the president would sign off on would sign off on a, a bill that didn't have some redeeming qualities. Right. It did cross party lines. It was signed by both sides. Yeah. Uh, President Obama did apparently uh, sign the bill. Um, I, from re what I what I what I do know about is I've read that. Uh, Congressman Marino was, was the forefront of it, so it uh, obviously crossed party lines. Uh, I'm not aware, I, I don't know enough about the particular bill to make an educated uh, decision about it. Uh, if there were loopholes in it and there were unex unexpected consequences, unintended consequences of what occurred, it certainly should be re resolved and fixed so that that doesn't happen. Uh, but for every one of them to agree to do it, uh, it is really, you know, it, it's something that's mu much be much must be much more complex than than anyone up here is aware of. Uh, the, the 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 problem part of it cer certainly should be resolved. But to uh, you know to to say that it's totally wrong, you know, we don't know that. Uh, we we know that part of it is certainly wrong. Uh, it's uh, it's not something that uh, is uh, a, a, an issue for a, a county commissioner uh, board to uh, to decide when you have a uh, a Congress and a, a president uh, sign something uh, and, and all agreed to do it. So therefore, uh, I'm am surprised that it was brought up here uh, without uh, knowing more about it and without. Uh, Prior, you know, it just appeared today, uh, so I'm, you know, I really don't have a uh, an opinion as to um, what that bill is or b what that bill was. Uh, you know, the part that does let the op opioids get into the free market is certainly incorrect. But again, without having uh, knowing any more about it than what I just heard now and what little I read in the paper. Uh, I I'm, don't really think this was the place for this. Thank you. Um, ladies and gentlemen, it absolutely is the place for it. 235 people died in Lackawanna County. That is fact. We have a crisis here. People are dying every day. Young people are dying. Old people are dying. It's scary. No family should have to ever have this situation happen to it. it tears the hearts out of families, and it's very, very destructive. It causes the best of people to be thieves, to do whatever they have to do to fix their addiction and to be able to pay for their addiction. This came up on my radar a couple days ago, and I was thinking about it and thinking about it. I put it together early this morning, and that's why I passed it out into the audience so everyone could take a look at it and bring it up on the floor to be voted for or be voted against. But I cannot vote against something that has been destructive to not only Lackawanna County, but to our country in general. So at this time, I'd like to give the opportunity for the public to address the board on agenda items only, and that's why I passed that add-on resolution to the agenda. So if anybody had anything they'd like to say about it, that they could view their, give their opinion. Anyone like to speak at this time? Okay. Whereas the United States is currently experiencing a crisis related to the opioid addiction, which resulted in the deaths of 33,000 Americans in 2016, and an even larger number projected for 2017. And whereas the Congress passed the Ensuring Patient Access and Effective Drug Enforcement Act in 2016, which limited the Drug Enforcement Administration, DEA's ability to freeze suspicious drug shipments from narcotics companies. Now that's the scary part right there. Freeze. Stop the DEA. Whereas said the law was had a negative and harmful outcome and stemming the opioid addiction battle. And whereas the Board of Commissioners hereby supports the repeal and ensuring patient access and effective drug enforcement act which prevents, prevents the DEA from freezing shipments that pose immediate danger to the community to the to the community. 
Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Board of Commissioners of Lackawanna County does hereby request the United States Congress to repeal the ensuing Patient Access and Effective Drug Enforcement Act of 2016 that is hampering the Drug Enforcement Administration's ability to freeze illegal drug shipments from drug companies and further repeal of any other provision of the said law that hampers the DEA's ability to prevent the spilling of opioid drugs in the communities by drug corporations. I'll make that motion. Do I have a second? You know, I, I, I'm, I'm not real familiar. I know I understand what, what came out, but I don't like um, hampering a business either. I think that's some of the, the problems that we have with this bill, and I think that's what some people were looking at is that the we want to limit the power of some of these agencies, and I do agree with that. So I'm, I wouldn't, I would normally support that this. Commissioner, I really would. It's just I don't know enough about everything that this bill had stated. I do know that um, Commissioner or that Congressman uh, Marino did drop his position. I'm assuming it was because of all of this. Um, you know, out of respect for the commission, I am going to second that for you because I do respect the fact that you're trying to do something um, to curb. Uh, the crisis in in our community um, but with the caveat of saying that I really am doing that um, to support your resolve in ending the opioid crisis and um, not knowing the entire bill or reading it I I, I do condemn anything that would um, affect uh, the increase in that continuing and I did see the numbers in West Virginia and I'm appalled by them so um, for that reason I will give you the second on that okay Thank you. Roll call. Commissioner Terriani. Uh, due to my lack of um, fully understanding this, I, I do support the uh, illegal drugs getting into the marketplace, and I do support the DEA. Uh, but without, with it just appearing on the agenda now, and without being able to uh, understand the bill further, when you had every congressman and every senator Can and the president it? sign it. I would like to know more about it before I would make a decision, a well-informed decision. Uh, I don't think this is the place again for this at this particular time. Uh, I'm going to abstain. Commissioner Cummings? Yes. Commissioner O'Malley? I believe this is the place and time because of the amount of people that lost their lives in Lackawanna County. And I've never been a person who lives inside the box. I think outside the box. And my concern is that families are losing loved ones. And I will never, ever let that. I'm trying to, we're trying to stop that, curve that, and make it end. And that's what I believe in. And all of us in this room have known someone who has died from some kind of overdose or maybe had it happen to a family member. And we have to be at the forefront to try to stop this even if we are just the commissioners of Lackawanna County, but we are and we represent 214,000 citizens. So it is our duty and I'll be voting yes. Thank you. Okay, ordinance first reading. At this time, Commissioner, prior to the reading of the ordinance, I have uh, two announcements that I'd like to read into the record. On October 26 at 2017, the Lackawanna County Controller's Office will be opening the uh, formal bids on the Lackawanna County Government Center at the Globe Store in this room at 2 o'clock that afternoon, and uh, it is a, a, a public bid opening, okay? What, where, what time is that, Andy? October 26th at 2 p.m. in the afternoon. They're due that day by 11 a.m. in the morning. We'll be formally opening them at 2 p.m. The controller and the deputy controller will be here. So I want to make that announcement publicly. Uh, uh, Controller DeBilio wants to add to that. That's fine. Thank you. Uh, could you also mention the fact that bids should be dropped off at the controller's office at 135 Jefferson Avenue? We, we, re we did recorrect that in the newspaper. Okay. We ran a, cor a correction ad yesterday with the correct address, and we did do that. And I want to point that out to your attention. Okay. Thank you. Okay. 
Yep. The uh, second announcement that I'd like to read at this time is the uh, budget uh, meetings will be held on Thursday, November 2nd, 2017. There will be the opportunity for the public to address the commissioners on the budget at 10 a.m. in the morning here in the commissioner's conference room, at 12.30 p.m. in the Moscow Borough Building, at 3 p.m. in the Elephant Borough Building, and at 6 p.m. in the Scott Township Building. These are all public meetings that will be publicly advertised and we'll hold all budget hearings on that day. Uh, the last thing I have is at this time I'd like to invite Mr. Keith Williams, who's the chairperson of the Disability Resource Fair, to come forward and make a brief presentation to us on their upcoming fair that he's very excited about that the commissioners have done for the first time in the history of Lackawanna County. Excuse me. Um, just before we go forward with uh, Keith and while he's getting set up, um, I just want everyone to know that those meetings that you announced for the public uh, budget meetings. Yes, Commissioner. Yeah, I had no say in, in where they were located. I didn't pick those locations and I didn't pick those times. If it was up to me, I'd want to be do it the way did we did it last year and have two in the evening because I'm not, only one in the evening does not work for me on budget hearings. I un understood, Commissioner. Just want to make sure the public is aware of that. Understood. Keith, you're on. <laughs> Let's talk about that event. It's going to be great. Excuse me. Yes, it is. Yeah, good, good morning, uh, commissioners. Um, yeah, I'll be brief. I know that you have a, a busy agenda. Thank you for, for letting me speak. Um, just, an, just an update. I think, first of all, that you're familiar with the date. Um, the Disability Resource Fair will be on Saturday, October 28th, um, Beaumont Mall from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Um, I'm happy to say that we have 17 organizations tabling and that is a combination represents a combination of um, businesses nonprofit agencies serve people with disabilities and um, volunteer peer driven support groups people with disabilities helping other people with disabilities based on on different types of conditions and uh, we have a, a, a wide a wide um, a wide variety. Uh, we work closely with the Viewmont Mall getting the getting the setup. Um, I certainly want to thank the commissioners for your generous support. We truly appreciate it. Um, the donation that's that has really helped a long way towards sponsoring this, meeting some expenses that we've had, some expenses that will come down the road within the next um, within the next week or so. Um, you know, certainly the Community Relations Department, Joe Dorenzo, Fran Pantuso, Maureen McWiggin Andy Pantuso. for their support. Andy has helped as well, and Andy Wallace. So we appreciate all the all of the support. Um, we also were able to get uh, some financial support from Allied Services and from the Center for Independent Living um, as well. So there are some organizations um, helping out and we would invite the public to attend. We certainly hope that all three of you will be able to come at some point. In fact, um, I'd also like to be able to, uh, to invite all of you at some point, if you're available through the day, to come up and say a few words um, at one point. I'll be in touch with your office between now and then, and we can make some arrangements and make some arrangements with Viewmont Mall management um, as well. So certainly if you could say a few uh, a few words um, at one point we're able to uh, physically fit everybody within the area in nice. front of JC Penney's nice. all around that way we've gone over the map the design and um, it should be a good day it's gonna be a great day again and we and we appreciate your support we really Com do Commissioner Cummings well, I, I appreciate the work that you're doing, and uh, I look forward to seeing um, how uh, good a turnout that you have, and I think it's going to be a, a good event for you. Thank you for your work. Commissioner Terriani. Uh Thanks again, Keith, for all your hard work, and uh, I look forward to seeing you that day. Thank you. Thank you. Keith, great job. Well, it's – thank you, but it, 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 it's, a, it's certainly a, team. a, I know committee, it's a, team and a yeah. committee effort. Every, everyone has uh, – uh, has been performing different tasks and responsibilities admirably with this and, and it's certainly a team a team effort um, everybody's been working on this and again thank you to the county in a number of different facets we've come a long way from no 
from the 70s when there's no curb cuts to curb cuts to buses to bathrooms to to everything to the second floor of the library having an elevator to yeah. it to everything so it's i mean we're trying to make sure that playing field's even for every citizen that we have and so who's who could come to this every everyone's invited to this sure. event yeah everyone's invited um you know the organizations whether it's the businesses the nonprofits or the uh, peer support groups will have literature information about their services and resources uh, available to the public sure and what time is the time what is it it will be 10 a.m. until 4 p.m. it's a long day so people have six hours to make it up to the mall right. and be involved come on in run down to the food court grab something to eat you know and come over and uh, and uh, check us out sounds good Keith We'll see you at the event. We'll see you at the, the event. Okay. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Ordinance first reading. Uh, this will be the first reading of S Ordinance Number two 250 of the Board of Commissioners of the County of Lackawanna for general obligation bonds. And the second reading will be held on November 1st, 2017. And I've been given uh, legal permission by uh, Attorney Brian Kaslansky, Bond Counsel for Lackawanna County to read a summary of this ordinance. It is an ordinance of the Board of Commissioners of the County of Lackawanna setting forth its intent to issue one or more series of general obligation bonds of the county in the aggregate principal amount not to exceed $42 million, specifying that such indebtedness is to be incurred to provide funds for a certain project of the county which consists of the following currently re refunding the county's outstanding general obligation notes series B of 29 and paying the costs and expense in issuing of the bonds declaring that the debt to be evidenced by such bonds together with all other indebtedness of the county will not be in excess of any applicable limitation imposed by the act approving an interest rate management plan approving the form of an interest rate management agreement and authorizing the preparation of a transcript of proceedings to be filed with the Department of Community and Economic Development in connection with the interest rate management agreement, providing when this ordinance shall become effective, authorizing and directing the preparation, execution, and delivery of all required documents and the taking of all other required action. I believe that concludes the summary of the reading and attorney Brian Kaslansky is here Aaron, and Mike Finn, our financial manager, to offer a very brief explanation on this uh, <laughs> general obligation resolution. Absolutely be brief. Tick, Good, tick, morning, tick. Com Good morning, commissioners. Um, uh, the 2009 bonds we cannot refund um, until uh, 2019. Uh, so what we are doing uh, and what this allows us to do as we went over is to do a forward rate lock um, and then we just issue traditional bonds in 2019 when we can actually refund those 2009 bonds and they would just be traditional fixed rate bonds. They wouldn't extend the term of the debt. It would just produce savings and what this does, uh, assuming the county's current uh, credit rating of an A stable outlook is still applicable in 2019 we would lock in approximately eight million dollars of, of net savings to the county uh, so that all this that's all this is intended to do is to lock in current interest rates uh, to be issued in 2019 uh, when we're able to do it again not extending the term um, and and trying to uh, combat save this potentially uh, rising interest rates between now and then Commissioner Cummings so you're basically locking in our our that, that's correct yeah thank you no, no problem commissioner terry any we've talked about this at yeah. length thank you i think this is another great day for lackawanna county government i'd like to thank kevin mitchell and tom durkin for the great job they do making sure that our financial house is in order and um it's about this us having an a stable bond rating and there was a lot of work that went into it and those two gentlemen and the other gentlemen that are here today are about what put this all brought this all together audits done on time living within our means and trying to do whatever we have to do to save a quarter here and there and do what we have to do and live within our budget but um this this is great because this is 2019 and we're able to lock in the savings starting today and the, the final meet the passage will be at the first meeting in uh, november so thank you for coming out today and uh, it's great savings like i said we're getting all of our debt 
straightened yeah, and, out and making sure that we're paying the least amount possible that we can. Uh, correct. And, and right now what we would do is okay. we would go from a, a 6% interest rate on those bonds uh, to approximately 3.2% <coughs> uh, is, is what we're looking to do. So that's what produces that great amount of savings. And uh, again, it's, it's due to all the things that you, you said uh, about your team and uh, as well as getting that rating uh, up to that, to the level it is. Good government doing good things. And thank you for your help, both of you. Um, Mike. Okay, um, I'd like to make the motion. Do I have a second? It's an ordinance, first reading of the oh, ordinance. Oh, geez, okay, that's what I'm thinking. Okay. Resolution 17-0257. Approving current payables. Be it resolved, Board of Commissioners of Lackawanna County does hereby approve the following payables. From the Lackawanna County General Fund, 251007 through 251973 inclusive, totaling $6,894,606.78. Electronic fund transfers, including all payroll accounts, totaling $3,442,389.37. And our county controller, Gary DeBilio, is here if there are any questions. Gary, everything's good? Does the board have any questions? I'd like to make a motion to approve current payables. Do I have a second? I'll second that, but I do have a commentary on, on the payables. Um, some of the invoices that I was looking for were coming out of both the prison and the sheriff's office, so um, I have some questions on them, not specific to this meeting right now, um, but maybe in the next meeting, just so you're aware. Absolutely. Okay? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Roll call. Commissioner Terriani? Yes. Commissioner Cummins? Yes. Commissioner O'Malley? Yes. 17 0258. Approving a plan of financing by the Lackawanna County Industrial Development Authority to undertake a, a project for the benefit of Lackawanna County and Pascalicchio Brothers Incorporated. Uh, certified by the Board of Commissioners of the County of Lackawanna, approving in accordance with Section 147F of the Internal Revenue Code of 1986 as amended a plan of financing by the Lackawanna County Industrial Development Authority to undertake a project for the benefit of MDBC LLC and Pascalicchio Brothers, whereas Lackawanna County Industrial Development Authority is a body existing under the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, whereas MDCP and Pascalicchio Brothers have requested the authority to issue its revenue note collectively to note one or more projects in an aggregate principal amount not to exceed $8,400 to install and build a 16,000 square foot new manufacturing facility held in the Valley View Business Park in the Borough of Jessup, whereas the authority has authorized the issuance of the note pursuant to a resolution adopted by the authority on August 23, 2017, whereas the approval by this board as evidenced by this resolution will enable the authority to finance the project without imposing any financial liability on the county, whereas Section 147F of the Internal Revenue Service Code, as amended, requires the applicable elected representatives of the governmental unit, in this case the county commissioners, on behalf that are issued of each government unit having jurisdiction over the bond in which any facility with respect to financing is to be provided, whereas the board is the applicable elected representative of the county in accordance with its section 147 of the code. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Board of Commissioners of the Colony of Lackawanna, the issuance of the note by the authority in an aggregate principal amount not to exceed $8,400,000, and the use of the proceeds of the note to finance the project is hereby approved. The foregoing action of this board shall not in any way pledge or obligate the credit or taxing powers of Lackawanna County, nor shall the county be liable for the payment of the principal of or premium interest on any note therefore related thereto. And we're uh, happy to have Attorney Brian Kaslansky, who also represents the Lackawanna County Industrial Authority. And at the conclusion of Brian telling us why we're passing this, we're going to invite Mr. Patty Pascalicchio, one of the partners from Pascalicchio Brothers, to come up and make a brief presentation on what the project would mean to Lackawanna County and the additional employees that we'll gain. Brian? Good morning, Commissioners. The approval that you have in front of you today is very similar to all the tax-free approvals that we do whenever we have a project for tax-free financing. It's a governmental approval, no liability on the county. It is a tax code requirement, exactly what you've seen before. But what I'd like to do is let Pat go through the project, answer any questions, and then take it from there. Thanks for coming in. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Um, we're a meat owned company. We uh, purchased a building in downtown Scranton back in 1980. It was the old Franklin 
the old armor building back on Franklin Avenue, and we've been there for 37 years. Me and my brother started the business, and since then we've grown. We used to be a distributor of meat products, lamb, beef, veal, pork, and over the years we've changed our business from a distributor Thanks. to a manufacturer, and now we currently pro, uh, manufacture somewhat 70 to 80 items on a daily to day to day basis. And over the years, our business has grown and we sort of grown out of our building. So it's been a two year search to find a new building or new land. And we did locate one up in uh, Belly View Industrial Park. And, you know, that's what we plan to do to build a 35 to 40,000 square foot building processing plant. Um, you know, so that's what we plan to do. And, you know, business is Additional good. employees. <laughs> we currently have between 50 to 60 employees right now. And uh, we needed to move on to a new building because we've grown out of this building. We, uh, to further get more business out there, we've sort of grown out of our building. And a lot of times we have to say no to what customers want because we can't do it at our facility right now. So in, in order to meet their needs, we felt we had to go bigger and so we could meet their needs. And over over the last five years, we've em, are, we've added employees and we've, we think we would add between 10 to 15 to 20 more nice. employees down the road. So that's what our intent is. Very nice. Commissioner Cummings. Yeah, I heard your story. I want you to come in for a small business spotlight, and I definitely want a tour because I think what you guys did there is great. So, a tour of a new building or old building? Both. <laughs> <laughs> we'll start, we start with the old. We're start with the old one maybe first. We should make yeah. a big to do out of the new <laughs> building because you know you're just the kind of people that we want to see continuing to work in our county and growing their business. And like I said, with our small business spotlight, um, you know, it's not always bringing people into our county. Right. Uh, it's focusing on the people that are already here. That that are doing a great job and pro providing jobs for our, our citizens and continuing through the generation after generation thank of bring you. continuing that work. Thank you. So thank you. I'm very proud of your work and your company and yes. thank you so much. Yes. I appreciate it. Thank you. Commissioner Terriani. You, uh, you and your brothers and Brian were here earlier in the week and we went over this fully and I really appreciate you coming again today. Thank you for your... Thank you. Thank you. Excuse me. Congratulations on your family business, really. First and foremost, you have a bill, you have a business in downtown Scranton. Now you're expanding to the Jesp Industrial Park. Um, I mean, this helps broaden our tax base. It's going to help you to pull in more bigger business that you may need. Definitely. That'll bring in more employees. And just thank you for what you and your family do. I know it's not easy every day, but you said there's nine more Pascal yes, girls coming yes. in. My, my son and my eight nephews are currently involved in the business, so. We're one big more happy room. family. <laughs> That's awesome. Need more room, but yeah, congratulations, Thank and you. we're very happy to be here to be just a, a very small part of this. Thank but, you. Thank but we'll be bringing you back the whole family in a Lorraine Cozy in a couple couple weeks from now. Sounds good. Thank you very much. But thank you. Okay. Um, I'd like to make a motion approving a plan for financing of the Lackawanna County Industrial and Development Authority to undertake a project that benefits MDBP and LLC of Pascalicchio Brothers, Inc. I'll make that motion and we'll wait for... I have a second. A couple, no, a second. And uh, should we wait on, wait on Mr. Commissioner Canoteri any? Because he's a small business? Yeah. Okay. We'll just wait a moment. But we're very, very happy, and congratulations. Like you said, it's not easy. And in 1980, I know you weren't thinking that in 2017 you were going to be building a brand new facility, and it's a big industrial park that wasn't even on the map when you guys opened. In 1980, the Jessup Industrial Park wasn't even, I don't even think it was even a thought at that point. So it's amazing how things happen. It's, I mean, that's a big family, too. So John, can we to move on and Commissioner Notariani could vote on the item when he comes in or not? He's coming right now. Yeah. It's just okay, going to be a second. I just figured because he has a small business no, and stuff no, like I the rest of us doing. Clarify it with the solicitor. But it's, a, right. it's really good. Okay, Tracy. Uh, Commissioner Notariani, this is the vote on the ordinance. For Pascal Kill Brothers. Roll call. Commissioner Terriani? Yes. 
Commissioner Cummings. Yes. Commissioner O'Malley. Yes. Thank you for coming in. We'll be talking to you very soon. Thanks, Brian. 17 0259. Entering into an agriculture conservation easement be resolved, Board of Commissioners of Lackawanna County does hereby enter into an agreement acting through its County Agriculture Land Preservation Board for the sale and purchase of an agricultural conservation easement with Elwood J. White and Beverly I. White as attached and present to explain the agreement is Eric Johnson and uh, Jerry Stiles from the Conservation and of course Commissioner Cummings is the Commissioner's representative on the board may want to add something too. Good morning. Thanks uh, for coming in. This is just one of the uh, the programs that the Conservation District administers uh, and Eric's going to talk about the details on this particular parcel. But we're going to be asking uh, for approval to enter into an agricultural conservation easement on a parcel in Greenfield Township. Greenfield Township. Um, um, this will be uh, very close to the 70th parcel that has gone into the program since its inception in the early 90s. And as you're aware, we're over 5,000 uh, acres of preserved farmland in Lackawanna County uh, to date. And I know you're going to be joining us on Friday for a small event in Scott Township to signify that. So uh, we'll be there. Uh, thank you. Good morning, Commissioners. Uh, as Jerry mentioned, uh, we've been running this program in Lackawanna County since 1994. Um, the agreement for sale and purchase that we have today for an agricultural conservation easement on Elwood and Beverly White's farm is for 46.30 acres in Greenfield Township. Um, total purchase price for this easement is $115,750. Uh, as Jerry mentioned, I believe that this is approaching the 70th parcel if it's not the 70th, uh, and it will signify uh, 5,046 acres uh, dedicated to farmland in the future. We're protecting open space, farmland, and being able to feed an ever-growing population through this program. Um, if there's any questions or comments on it, I'd be happy to answer them, but otherwise I would be um, bringing this to the commissioners for your approval. Eric, could you uh, explain exactly who gets this money and why and what the purpose of the program is so Absolutely. the public knows? Uh, purpose of the program is ex exactly what I said, to preserve farmland for future generations. What we're doing is protecting not only farmland, but our best farmland, high quality soils that will be available to grow crops on in the future. Um, it's being developed, converted from agriculture into residential usage, commercial usage, every single day across the nation, but specifically in Lackawanna County as well. Um, so what we're trying to do is to slow that encroachment on the agricultural community and make sure that it's there in the future. Um, the money that will be obligated to this program goes directly to the landowners. Um, with this particular easement, the funding comes from the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. We also receive funding from the County of Lackawanna, but that won't be used in this particular purchase. And it will go directly to the landowners for their own use. Um, the program will limit the development on the property to agriculture only. Um, no residential subdivisions or commercial enterprises that are non-agricultural will be allowed on the property in perpetuity or forever in one day, as we like to say it. So. Um, through sale, transfer, whatever, that farm will always be a farm and available for the next generations. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Terry, well, Great job. It's been going on for a while now, and you guys are very good, really, yeah. really do. Thank okay, you. thank you. Yeah, you guys do a very good job. Thank you. I'd like to make a motion entering an ag um, agriculture conserva conservation easement. Do I have a second? second. Roll call. Commissioner Terriani? Yes. Commissioner Cummings? Yes. Commissioner O'Malley? Yes. Thank you for what you guys Thank do over there. So Thanks. Have a good day. 17-0260. Approving amendments for the Human Service Development Fund, be it resolved, Board of Commissioners. Lackawanna County is hereby approved provider agreements for Department of Human Services for fiscal year July 1, 2017 through June 30th, 2018 for the following allied in-home services, homemaker services, Jewish family services for counseling, Meals on Wheels for Home Delivered Meals. And Mr. Bill Browning, our Director of Human Services for Lackawanna County, is here to answer any questions. Good morning, Commissioner. Uh, this is a, um, a general human service fund. It's uh, the GAP services to, to allow for, for us to provide um, homemaking services, counseling, and Meals on Wheels uh, to eligible people, um, usually while they're getting approved for other services. So. 
they may be disabled and not eligible for aging services, et cetera. So this is a, a kind of a gap service to cover that. Thank you. Okay. Does the board have any questions? I'd like to make a motion approving the agreement with the Human Services Development Fund. Do I have a second? Second. All roll call. Commissioner Terriani? Yes. Commissioner Cummings? Yes. Commissioner O'Malley? Yes. 17 0261. Approving a homeless assistance program agreement. Be resolved, Board of Commissioners of Lackawanna County, to hereby approve agreements for the Department of Human Services and its providers for homeless assistance programs for the following Catherine McCauley Center, Bridge Housing, Catholic Social Services, Rental Assistant, Case Management Services, United Neighborhood <coughs> Centers, Rental Assistance, Case Management, and Emergency Housing. And again, Mr. Browning is here to explain these agreements. Um, as the name implies, that is a homeless assistance program. It's uh, to uh, assist uh, people in finding permanent, ho permanent uh, supported housing, um, get them back on their feet, and eventually be paying uh, their, their own rent. Does the board have any questions for Bill? Is, uh, is this is this uh, just for um, emergency family services, or is this for prisoners, or what is this, or is both, or is there a separation, or uh, primarily this is uh, for families. Um, there are other services where we do uh, but for <laughs> for prisoners, but in this case, Catherine McCauley Catholic Social and UNC, it's uh, primarily for for uh, families and people involved with our systems. They're all legal immigrants, correct? That's one of the things we have to ask. Well, I'm, I'm going to yeah. get asked, you know, so okay. I have to ask you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, so you have to ask, and, and if they are, what happens? If they are, they go through an application process to find out which uh, uh, programs they're, they're available uh, for. If they're federally funded programs, HAP-funded programs like, like these are. And in some cases, if they're family and they're not eligible for that, mm -hmm then they become a CYS family and we'll subsidize that for a, a shorter period of time until because it's cheaper to pay for a hotel or an apartment for a very brief time than it is to place an entire family in care. Mm -hmm. And also the, the social impact of the breaking up the family as well. So if there, it, it, what if a family is someone that is uh, an illegal family, do we have places for them? If they're an illegal family, if they have children, um, I mean, we'll, we could give them informal uh, assistance, um, again, because we're still obligated to ensure the safety of the, the children. So if they're illegal, we would still have to take them into care or provide uh, some level of service that would be equivalent to the service that we'd provide to, to a legal uh, immigrant. Just for the children or for the whole family? Well, we have to work with the family by law. Okay. Do we have interpreters if they can't speak English? Yes. And... Is it just, a, I know that we had, Marywood was helping us with that, weren't they, but. We contract with a, a few different providers. Uh, it's becoming more diverse in this uh, community, so we have Spanish interpreters <coughs> and uh, Bhutanese, uh, largely, those are, are the, the largest ones. Big population. Well, I know what, that was a problem with the interpreters. They didn't have, a, they didn't have enough, isn't that correct? Yeah, that's a lot. We could always use more interpreters, yes, because uh, as a last resort, we use it a, a call-in service, and it's still not the same as doing face-to-face. -face, but um, at this point, we're able to manage, but it, it does get difficult, especially after hours. Mm -hmm. Bill, do we reach out to all the colleges? Because there might be some kids that need some interim work, you know what I mean? Like Marywood, Keystone, any We work uh, with uh, a lot of the, the universities, and we're with the, the development of that new uh, department, we're starting to increase uh, internships. So that would be one of the areas we're looking at. For some work, though, especially legal work, they, they have to have a certain certification, which uh, sure. many of the, the students wouldn't have. Okay. Commissioner Terry, any? No, I'm, I'm good. Um, this really matters. You know, a lot of us take it for granted. You go home, you have a warm house, you have a nice car, you, your refrigerator's full, but to make sure that the children are not on the streets. Um, if you ever get a chance in the summer, give uh, St. Francis Kitchen a few hours and you'll see a lot of kids at St. Francis's over the summer because when they're not in school, you'll see them there for lunch. This so. isn't that though, right? No, but I'm just saying if you want, I mean, there's families out there that are right. in need and that's some that live that on the street. They take advantage of all so, yeah, the services. They take, out, they take advantage of all the services, but it's good that we have something to try to get them off the streets because the children don't need to be out there. Off the streets, out, out of tents, we have, uh, yeah. unfortunately. Living in their cars, under bridges. You know, and, and some of these kids are actually still 
still going to school. Am I right, Bill? Yeah. And that's, I mean, think about this. You, well, you go home. To, what if we do have an illegal family? Aren't we a lot, uh, obligated to report them or no? I mean, we have no mechanism. The only thing that we're obligated to do or required by law is to provide the service. Um, we don't have any choice in that matter. And they try to keep the family together if they can, because a lot of some of these people could be down the luck. Yeah. You can live outside if you want to, you know what I mean? But we try to keep them from not. No, I'm asking about the illegal immigrants that come oh, okay. here. So if they come here and Bill is, you know, he's working for our county. So what happens? He's saying what happens if an illegal fa immigrant family comes here? They have to oblige them and take care of them. So. Because they're a person waiting to look at the law. That's, I mean, that's the reason for it, right? I don't know that he's obligated to report it. That's what I'm asking. Are, isn't he obligated to report that family after? I mean, how long do we provide the services for them? I mean, what happens to these families? It would be equivalent to any other family. We'll try to get them uh, together and on their own as quickly as possible. Um, that's one of our goals. That's why we, we continually are doing <coughs> research, new programs to limit the time that people are either in care or receive our service so they could... I'm just specifically referring to illegal immigrant families. Yeah. Do we have a lot of them right now? Not a lot, no. Do you know a number or no? Off the top of my head, no. I, uh, I get very few uh, uh, requests because one of the things would be medical issues. If a medical issue arises with a child that's in care, they wouldn't be eligible for public assistance, so then we would have to pay. But it doesn't, it's never come on their radar as a huge amount. Um, so I'd say it's a fairly limited. For the most part, uh, illegal try to stay under the, the They don't want to be, they don't, they don't want to introduce themselves to government no, most likely no, so this a, is our own citizens most so it's a very small I, I think I've seen a, in the last year I've signed off on maybe one or two authorizations mm -hmm. um, tops okay. and those two authorizations I think were actually for the same family okay thank you I'd like to make a motion approving the homeless assistance program do I have a second second roll call Commissioner Terriani yes. Commissioner Cummings yes. Commissioner O'Malley yes 17-0262 Entering into a CWIS data sharing agreement, we resolve the Board of Commissioners of Lackawanna County this year by entering into a child welfare information solution data sharing agreement with the Pennsylvania Department of Human Services for electronic data exchange for 67 Pennsylvania County children and youth agencies. And again, Mr. Browning, who will stay at the podium for the balance of the meeting, will explain this agreement. Uh, this is an agreement that uh, allows us, well not allows us, but we're actually mandated to share information with uh, the state database on uh, child abuse. Um, this is a, a actually a national requirement for the state to have a, a child welfare information system. And so various counties have numerous systems uh, uh, and they all have to speak to the CWIS program and this allows it to do so. Okay, okay. does the board have any questions? Entering into a CWIS data sharing agreement. Do I have a second? Second. Roll call. Commissioner Terriani. Yes. Commissioner Cummings. Commissioner O'Malley. Yes. 17 0263. Entering into an addendum with EOTC, be it resolved, the Board of Commissioners of Lackawanna County is hereby approved and enter into an addendum to a contract for professional services for employment opportunity. Training Center for Fiscal Year 2017-18 for the Office of Youth and Family Services. Again, Mr. Browning. This uh, will authorize us to uh, increase the cap from 50000 to 70000 for a well-researched um, evidence-based parenting program that we use frequently as well as the, the courts. Um, currently, uh, they are underfunded and awaiting uh, funders uh, uh, from various foundations, and so this uh, will keep their doors open um, and allow us to continue referrals for, uh, at <coughs> least for the, for the next month or two. Okay, does the board have any questions? I'd like to make a motion entering into a dinner with EOTC. Do I have a second? Second. Roll call. Commissioner Terriani? Yes. Commissioner Cummings? No. Commissioner O'Malley? Yes. 17-0264. Approving the provider and professional agreements for Office of Youth and Family Services, be it resolved, Board of Commissioners of Lackawanna County does hereby approve provider and professional agreements for Department of Human Services, Office of Youth and Family from July 1, 
2017 through June 30th, 2018 for the following. The Scranton Counseling Center, the Family Intersystem Team Training, Penn State, the Prosper Program Educational and Training Services, Bethana, Foster Care, and Luzerne County Children and Youth Foster Care. Mr. Browning, this might be your last opportunity to speak today. <laughs> Looking forward. <laughs> Um, the Penn State contract is for the PROSPER program. That's uh, been an extremely successful program. It's evidence-based, uh, actually one of the few that, that has shown consistent uh, uh, results in reducing drug use uh, by, by youth. Um, so that's what this contract is for us to continue using that program. The FIT team is a new initiative to um, have counseling bridge the gap between child welfare and counseling so we could serve kids that are transitioning from foster care back home or from residential um, to lesser uh, settings to ensure the, their success uh, and them remaining out of care. Bethana is uh, just a, a foster uh, care agency that we, we've used for I believe one child and Luzerne County uh, we're contracted with them because uh, we're obligated by law to find relatives, and in this case, it happened that the relative was also a, a Luzerne County uh, foster home, so we had to contract with them. Okay, does the board have any questions for Mr. Browning? I don't have any questions, but I have commentary. There's some things on here that are lumped in and I can't vote on, so um, I'll be abstaining on this vote, just so you're aware. Okay. I'd like to make a motion approving the providers and professional agreement for the Office of Youth and Family Services. Do I have a second? Second. Roll call. Commissioner Terriani? Yes. Commissioner Cummins? Staying. Commissioner O'Malley? Yes. Thanks, Bill. Thank Opportunity you. for the public to address the board. Excuse me, I have a, a previous engagement. I'm going to leave you, Joan. I'll talk to you again, I'm sure. Thank you. Have a good day. Uh, Joan Hodewan, it's 220 Linden Street, Scranton. Uh, first, I just want to say how pleased I was to see DC Pets up here. Uh, the gentleman who owns it uh, is a man after my own heart because we were both 05H Morse code interceptors when we first came into the Army, or what they called Diddy Boppers, or the Royal Association of the Lightning Fast Chicken Pluckers. That was us. <laughs> So I, that was pleasing. And also on Ordinance 250, uh, the general obligation bonds, um, kudos to whoever thought of that, you know, to save us some money. Uh, looking forward down the road to the probability of interest rates rising. Uh, more than that, I'm, I'm more than a little concerned about the city of Scranton, which is the largest municipality in the county. It's about, what, 35% of the, of the population. Uh, I'm not at all convinced that the city itself is going to dodge a bullet from the lawsuit pending on the sale of the sewer authority. If that were to be determined to be illegal, that could be real messy in terms of the city's financial health. And then, of course, there's the rosy picture of the Scranton School District. Uh, and I bring this up because while I'm pleased with what you've done about this ordinance, um, I would hope that as you're entering budget season right now, or the last stages of it, uh, that you keep in the back of your mind what will be the impact on the county and its financial health and credit rating if something really goes wrong with the city of Scranton or its school district. Um, I don't think that's going to win you any uh, favors. And so if you can do this proactively, keep doing it because I wouldn't bet any money on the long-term health of the city of Scranton right now. Just my personal opinion. Which brings me to the budget. Now I'm not preempting the November 2nd budget meetings, but there's something I want to say. I read uh, Jeff Horvath's um, article about the budget presentation which his article ran on October 14th the day after you presented it and it's county taxes steady officials say no hike despite 2.3 million dollar deficit and then it talks about a 123 million dollars in spending and 120.66 million dollars in revenues that accounts for the 2.3 million dollar deficit of course this is disregarding um, 
the $19.85 million surplus that's been building over several years. So Mary Gorm very kindly sent me a copy of the um, budget worksheet report. Is this on the website now? The entire tentative budget is on online. Okay. okay. And are there copies at the libraries? I know there's one out on our front desk. I'm unaware if the library has any. Yes. Okay. At any rate, I went through it because I had to for um, the library board. And you get to page 31 of 51 pages, and you see revenue totals and expense totals. The revenue total was 140.5 million, but when you deduct the surplus, you get your 120.66 million. Expense totals 123 million. But then there are 20 more pages, okay? And if you don't pay attention, the grand totals are in revenues 242 million if you take out the um, surplus you're looking at like 220 million and uh, expense uh, yeah, grand total money, is 219 is, million which is like a 2.5 million dollar surplus okay so um, the figures in the paper basically refer to the general fund Okay, not to the entire budget because there are still 20 more pages of budget revenues and expenses which continue. So we're looking at, because you know, I, I said, you know, boy, Scranton has a bigger budget than Lackawanna County. Well, it, actually it doesn't because you're looking at like $220 million figure. So as people prepare and study the budget issue before this November 2nd meeting, which they should, and you should try to access either online or at, on paper copies of this worksheet and take a look at these figures, you know. Do you have a deficit or do you have a possible surplus? Okay, and you look at these other things. You start making cuts, I mean, which budget are we talking about? The general fund or the entire budget? So I, I was confused, you know, when I got the, the document at what I saw in the paper and what I'm seeing in the budget worksheet. So I don't know if you want to comment on that. Um, I, like I said, I'm not trying to preempt your budget meetings, uh, but I didn't see the, these grand totals uh, in, in the budget message that I, I got that last Friday. So people should know that, yes, the county's budget is significantly larger by at least $100 million than the city's budget. Okay, and there may not be a deficit. There may be a surplus. No, Thanks, there's, John. There's not, but um, what's we the like city's? Your, we like your way of thinking. <laughs> what's the city's budget? Uh, what is there? One answer. Um, the 2017 budget was like something like 132 million. Okay. Thanks. Anyone else? Okay, Commissioner Cummings. Tom, do you want to answer John for me? So our Chief Financial Officer, Tom Durkin, thank you for being here today. Good morning, Commissioners. Um, first of all, Joan, in the budget message, the last paragraph does address the total county budget. It, it says that, and I'm paraphrasing because I don't have it in front of me, that the general fund budget is a hundred and whatever million. It says the um, debt service budget is 19.9 the capital budget is I think about 20 million and all other restricted funds uh, I forget what it's called but anyway the total special revenue the transfers, thank you right? Kevin the the total I think is the last line of the 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 budget message has with the total 219 again I don't have it in front of me so whatever that number is, is, there a deficit or is there a surplus? there's a deficit in the general fund no, no. But we report on the general fund because that's what's funded by county taxpayers. No, that's not true. You have a library tax. I'm aware of that. And you have an arts and education tax. That goes to their departments. We don't yeah. put that in our general I know, fund. No, but you say that the general fund is funded by the taxpayers, so it's the library tax, so it's the arts and education tax. That's correct. The general fund. All of the information is contained in the copies of the budget, as you said, that are yeah. online or available in paper. 
I mean, and the fact of the matter, the, the surplus that we refer to, the 19.9, I think is what you said, that's general fund surplus. I know. Thank you. And, and again, we have, I'm guessing about 65 funds total, and most of those special revenue funds outside of the general fund are, um, by design, the revenue equals the expenditures each year. There are some, uh, the Culture and Education Fund, for example, does have a, a surplus. Um, there are others, I, I think the Debt Service Fund may have a small surplus. Um, but the general fund is the county's operating fund and typically, at least since I've been with the county, when we report numbers as far as what the deficit or surplus would be for any given year, we report on the operating fund. You're absolutely correct. I'm not denying that. It is. It's all part of the county budget. I but you have to look at the grand total, okay? Um, before you start saying things like we have a 2023 million dollars deficit without explaining that that's just this one total. Well, it was five, John. It was But we believe that the grand total <laughs> we do. are misleading well, that the meaningful part of the budget for county taxpayers is the general fund because that's our operational fund. And we believe that many of the other special revenue funds are, would just confuse the issue because we would have to report, again, maybe 65 separate surpluses or deficits if we reported every fund. I mean, they're there, as you said, and, and you're absolutely correct. They are part of the county's budget, but typically we report on the operating budget, which is a general fund. We will agree to disagree. <laughs> well, we have the numbers, so I mean, I think, I think that we know what we're talking about when we're looking at them, and I, I certainly know that Tom does, but, um, you know, thank you for trying to explain it. Anyway, I Welcome. appreciate it. Um, I am going to, I'm looking at holding a uh, reassessment meeting. Tracy has got a call out to Dixon City Borough. We're waiting for a call back and that is not confirmed, but we're looking at October 25th at 6 o'clock at night. Okay, hopefully we'll get that at Dixon City Borough. If not, I'll have it somewhere in the evening so that everyone can attend if they're interested. And I don't know who's going to attend that. All I know is I will be there and presenting what I feel should be uh, presented at a recess one here. Um, I did watch the uh, two videos that I was uh, not at because it was not presented that I should be, but um, one was given by the League of Women Voters and it was PEL that uh, put this um, video on. And um, it started off saying that he was going to give a presentation that was non-biased, but then ended up being a presentation where he was in support of reassessment. So, I mean, that's the second one that ended up being in support of reassessment that, uh, you know, oh, well, what are you going to do? So I now I'm forced to do something in, against reassessment. Um, fortunately for me, Jeff Harvath from Scranton Times is willing to sit down with me and go through uh, what my items and opinions are as well and I appreciate the fact that he's willing to do that and I wasn't able to accommodate him this week but I will make sure I get that done Jeff. Um, in the uh, assessment hearing by PEL they I am going to show how contradictory they are they basically said that it's not that this reassessment is being done for fairness issues but then they referred to their own uh, website to read on their counties in crisis report, which basically states that reassessment's done to garner more money for the municipalities and the government. So um, I will be presenting that report as well, and I'll read that to you at my reassessment meeting so I can, you know, let you know how that uh, doublespeak is done. Um, there was a, a question on whether or not anyone from Luzerne County had been affected uh, by the reassessment in Luzerne County and if, if anybody uh, was affected in Luzerne County through their reassessment if they were harmed by it like this commissioner claims would happen and the gentleman that was putting the presentation on said he wasn't aware of any which 
I find that really hard to believe because um, I remember spreading this gentleman's GoFundMe page around. Uh, 91 year old Luzerne County man's back taxes are paid by GoFundMe donors after the reassessment from uh, the guy couldn't even afford to pay them anymore. 91 year old man. So, um, yeah. Here you go, Mark. There's one, okay? There's one person, in the, and this was in the Times Leader. Gentleman almost lost his house. Um, 91 years old. So I have proof. I'll give you another one. Luzerne County reassessment debacle by Wendy Manischewski. Now, I don't know who this is, but there's some type of a PA pundits. I guess it's a blog or something. Um, Luzerne County PA hasn't reassessed their 160,000 parcels since 1965. Uh, they're, they're referring to it now as Hazard County because of the reassessment. Um, they, pay, they, they said 21st century appraisals run by Tim Barr was hired at $8 million to conduct a fair and balanced countywide reassessment. That was in 2008 that this report came out. $8 million. So to say that it might not cost $13 million uh, a couple years later, in my opinion, is completely wrong. Of course it's going to cost more than $8 million. I mean, they paid $8 million for Luzerne County. Um, you know, I, I just, I, I can't, when, when they ask about the pricing, I know that uh, Chief Walls had said something to the effect of $50 per, $50 per to 125. 125 That was the estimates back then, because that's what they were saying in the, in the reports I read from back then in 2005 and 2006. So I can't imagine that it's not going to be more than that. In Blair County, um, some of the amounts there were, were high as well. Um, you know, they're, they're giving examples here of how people's taxes went up and um, they have, uh, I'll just read the one because I can, there's like three pages here. Um, a lady sister's home in Hazel Township. Uh, the assessed value came to 58000 when my source said the home and land aren't worth more than 25000 because it needs a lot of maintenance work. See, but that's something that people don't take into consideration that's, you don't know who the assessor is and they may vary. That they're never, it's not the same person going around looking at every house to compare. So you have different, these are, these are subjective opinions. They're not objective at all. They may have a checkoff list, but it's still subjective. So it's always going to be different. And it's never fair. It's never going to be completely fair. And PEL, last but not least, PEL actually admitted that that less than 25% of the, the uh, results after the, the year after remain fair. And Luzerne County is already out over the 20 mark, 20 mark markage point where they want to have to redo a reassessment again because they're all out of whack already. Um, PEL encourages people to go home real charter. That way they don't have to have a, a limit and cap on their taxes in the municipal municipality. I guess that's why Luzerne voted. But I believe that Luzerne, the whole entire government changed after reassessment because of the fact that people were so upset over how bad it ended up being for them. Commissioner, <clears throat> I think what you had mentioned before, the, the uh, common level ratio in Luzerne County I is actually in the negative right now. Right. So actually, if you're talking fairness, I guess, the assessed values in Luzerne County are actually higher right now than they should than be. the market value of what you would sell your property for. Right. They had a reassessment. Yep. And I, I don't know why the man from the Economy League is not aware of that. Those figures are published every year. I mean, everybody's aware of that because that, that's an anomaly in, in, you know, when you look at it. I look at those figures all the time. Well, maybe this PEL representative can come to the meeting I have on the 25th and explain why some of the things that he said in the meeting are different from the report that we have on his website. Do um, you want us to invite, do you want us to invite him to attend that or not? You can attend, sure. Yeah, no. I'd like to know the answer to that. Um, and I think it was uh, www.pelchange.org that it was listed on. Joe Cross. I'd have to go back and look. But Joan, you were there, so do you remember what, what the website was? Okay. Um, yeah, so uh, 
that's my my thoughts on that. The other thing that was brought up was that I am fear mongering by bringing up 1,900 people on the upset sale uh, this past two weeks ago. Um, no, that's not fear mongering. That's a fact. Okay. Um, that's just not a product of people. There may be some people that don't uh, pay their bills on that list. But when you have 1,900 and 2,000 people on a consistent basis year after year, it's a problem in the county. It's not, it, 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 you know, I mean, you can't say that people are just lazy in general and don't want to pay their bills. That's, that's, I mean, I'm sure there are some. But I know there's others that want to pay them and can't, just like this guy that had to do a GoFundMe page to pay his. You know, and I, I just, uh, I just think that uh, reassessment's going to hurt a lot of people. And, and it has. And I have more examples. I'll read them every meeting. I'll have an, three more next week, or next, next meeting. Um, another issue that came up this past two weeks is um, our budget. And I have many issues with our budget that we're working on. And um, like I said, I can't discuss anything with the uh, union negotiations, however, um, our union contracts that are currently in place are now posted on our website for all to read. Um, they're under human resources right now, but we're trying to get a link to move that to the front page, right, Trace? So where would they go? Can you tell them how to get to that? If you go on the county website, there's a tab on the top that says administrative services. You click on that click on another link which takes you right to the human resources page but in the meantime in the next couple days IT is going to put a link on our home page which will take you right to those okay and I appreciate uh, my fellow commissioners uh, agreeing with that thank you um, please read the uh, agreements because right now I think that um, you know uh, people don't understand how difficult it is to, for somebody that's in a business, I'm in a private business, I come in and, you know, I make up all the hours that I approve and I, I approve the salaries. But then when I come into the county um, and look at the fact that our, there are other elected officials that are here that run their departments and we have to oversee the budgets, but yet we're not able to do anything to... Um, curb anything in those departments in far, as far as overtime or anything like that. Um, one of the major things that I'm looking at is overtime. And there's a few departments that I feel that we can definitely change some things. Um, one without negotiating on uh, any contracts that we currently have. And one would require it. So um, I'm hoping that some of those things get changed. I was going to read some of the sections in the in the uh, con the collective bargaining agreement, but I'll wait because it's going to take a while. Um, last thing is is um, with the uh, prison. Um, and I'll announce that this at the prison board meeting next as well. I think it's time that we start looking at privatizing the prison. Um, there's lawsuit after lawsuit. It's, you know, I mean, how much more can a county take? We are, tw what's, what's our budget on the prison? We have 27 mill and I think we get six million back in reimbursements from the state and federal government which costs us around 20 million dollars of taxpayer money is that about right that's, that's an approximation, yes. thank you that's a 21 million dollar bill to the taxpayers here that they're paying on that we get po up to possibly seven million reimbursed through the state and federal government that's outrageous and then we get lawsuit after lawsuit after lawsuit. It, it seriously, I really think it's time that we looked at a different scenario for the prison, and that's where I stand on that. Thank you. 
Uh, getting back to Joan, Tom already answered basically your, you know, some of your questions, but um, with the with the city and the school district, it, I mean, we're our doors are open to everybody. We we've had like two meetings in the last year. We invited everybody in to talk about what's going on, and we did them the year before. We we try to work with everybody because you know it's it's the same tax base for all of us. I mean, it's a different it's different tax for us. Or the county tax, the city school district, and the city. But we try to work with everyone, and. So are we. That's, well, that was our point in talking. That's what about. I'm saying. We always work with them in like the land bank. The land bank itself, first municipality, right out of the gate, city of Scranton. Yeah, we work, and I think we have like 40 some properties back in the tax roll that weren't even had no option of actually ever being on the tax roll because of the red tape. So we work with them as much as we possibly can, as diligently as we can, and our doors are always open. And to anybody of you in the audience, yes, we will work with the city and school district. There's anything we could try to work with them, help them with, because it's the same tax base, and we represent the same people, and we do care. And I think our government does a great job. And and all of our directors and deputies are here and all of our employees and thank you to all of them um most but not the, all the prison the prison is a, is a different situation and uh you I mean i know that that's something that's people have looked at in the past and uh i think no matter what we still as the governing bodies of lackawanna county would still be the go-to people at the end whether we at least it out or you contracted it out we still would still have the burden of any issue that could go on so you know that's just my thoughts on that but um last but not least i'd just like to wish everyone a very very happy and safe halloween and remind all of our the viewing audience make sure your children wear reflective costumes stay in your neighborhoods don't open your candy until your parents or guardians look at it and um have a great night it's coming up around the corner and anybody that's driving on october 31st drive slow look for the halloweeners make sure everybody's safe make sure they get home thank you i'd like to make a motion to adjourn do i have a second second roll call commissioner cummings Yes. Commissioner O'Malley. Yes. Thank you for tuning in.